and tell the peoples of the world that communism sounds really good in theory, but that in practice it always returns to the same system it was before. There are problems with this analysis, among them that it's quite shallow, but apparently the CIA didn't think so because they have sponsored the animated movie as anti-communist propaganda. And apparently the book is still required reading in schools in the US or something like that. The US teachers, of course, tend to stick with this rather obvious surface level explanation that everything moves back to how it was. But it doesn't have to be interpreted that way. It could also be seen as anti-authoritarian. And many claim that Orwell himself was a socialist and that he couldn't have been anti-communist because of that. It seems that his beliefs depend on what definition of socialism you're using. It doesn't seem like he was a fan of revolution, but he wanted healthcare and apparently in America that makes you a communist. But that's not the point of this video. The point is to explain the real-life parallels the book was based on, one by one. Please note, I will mainly talk about the 1954 movie, though I have read the book and I will mention some parts from it when I feel like it's an important change. That being said, let's go. We start off with a narrator explaining that the manor farm is not doing well. It used to be a good farm, but the farmer, Mr. Jones, changed and now he treats his animals badly and that the farm is in a bad state because of it. This makes the animals unhappy. And this is our first parallel. The farm is supposed to be the Russian Empire around 1900. Once great, like during the reign of Peter the Great, but now not as much. And the ruler at the time, Tsar Nicholas II, was widely seen as an incompetent and bad ruler. Uh, for example, he lost the Russo-Japanese War, refused to give the new parliament any power, and oversaw multiple human rights violations, like when he ordered his army to shoot into a crowd of peaceful protesters. The animals are supposed to be, in the Marxist sense, the working class. They are the ones who work by producing things in opposition to Farmer Jones, who doesn't work and just takes the things the animals produce as his. If you're familiar with Marxism, this is quite an obvious parallel to bourgeoisie and proletariat. The animals are unhappy and assemble at a big meeting, the first meeting of all animals, we are told. This could be a reference to the first Internationale, where the working classes of the world met for the first time, but there isn't much to go on there. We learn that this hawk is the oldest and wisest of the animals. He calls the meeting and he tells them about their condition, uh, how the eggs the hens produce are taken from them, how the horse will not live to retire once he becomes weak, and how the pigs will be slaughtered. He asks them if this is just and if it has to be this way, and he says no. He explains that the humans produce nothing, yet they take it all. He tells them of his dream, a world without humans, where things made by animals are only used by animals, where they are not slaughtered or stolen from. The farm is rich enough in grain for all of them to be fed, but the greedy farmer keeps it all to sell for a profit. He says they must remove the farmer and create a better farm for all. He also explains that they must be watchful, that they may never become like the farmer, that they must always be friends and never enemies of each other. This is called foreshadowing. In the book he gives them some commandments at this point, but they only show up later in the movie. Uh, the pig then dies in front of everyone. Pretty dramatic. This pig represents multiple people at once, but it's closest to Karl Marx. You know, the guy who spent his entire time pointing out how the working classes were stolen from, how better work would be possible, even though he knew he wouldn't live to see it in that one. Uh, the hawk could also more widely describe Marxism in general. His entire philosophy that is only concerned with informing people about their condition. If you want to learn more about Marxism, click that link here. Anyway, because the hawk's enemies now know of their condition, and the idea that a better farm is possible is planted in their heads. A short time later, the farmer forgets to feed the animals, and they break into the food store, and when he threatens them with the whip, they start a revolution and chase him off. This is probably a reference to the fact that the driving force behind the Russian Revolution in 1917 under Lenin was hunger. The Tsar was busy spending lots of money on his army to fight in World War I, and his people had to go hungry.